Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. These genes, that is what we are going to talk about now. Now, before we talk about the genes, let us quickly talk about the chromosomes. A quick recap. I mean, I have already spoken about all these things when we have discussed the lesson on cell, but still I think it is important to have a quick recap because if you are not sure about the structure of chromosome, it will be very difficult to understand the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So, we will spend some time for the chromosomes recap. So, let us have a quick recap on the chromosomes. So, let us quickly review the structures which we have studied before also inside the nucleus and related to chromosomes. So, the first structure that we will talk about is the chromatin. So, let us see what it is. These are the thin thread-like structures which are embedded in the nucleoplasm. Now, I am not going to talk about each and every part of the nucleus in detail again. So, nucleoplasm is just the uh, fluid-like substance which is present inside the nucleus. So, it is like how you have cytoplasm inside the cell. Similarly, you have nucleoplasm inside the nucleus. So, in this nucleoplasm, you have very thin thread-like structures as you can see here. So, these thread-like structures are called chromatin, right? Okay, so what do they contain? They are composed of DNA that is deoxyribonucleic acid, RNA that is ribonucleic acid and some histone and non-histone proteins. So, that is basically the composition of the chromatin. Now, how are these chromatin related to the chromosomes? Well, these are the chromat these chromatin, they only later form chromosomes. So, how do they form chromosome? Okay, we'll see that. So, these chromatin threads, they exist only during the resting stage of a cell. Now, I am sure that all of you remember the cell cycle which we had discussed. So, for every cell in the lifetime of a cell, they spend a lot of their time in the resting stage when the cell is not dividing. Correct? So, in that stage, the cell is just growing and the cell is getting matured and getting ready to divide itself. So, after the resting stage comes the cell dividing phase where we talk about the cell division, mitosis, meiosis, etc, etc. So, these chromatin threads are present only during the resting stage where there is no, when there is no division taking place actually. So, what changes happen to this chromatin when the cell enters into the dividing stage? Well, these chromatin condense to form structures called chromosomes. So basically, if you see, the composition of the chromosome is going to be the same as the composition of chromatin. That's because end of the day, the chromatin itself is forming the chromosome. Correct? Okay. So the chromosomes, shape-wise, they are rod-shaped structures. They are formed when chromatin condense together and when the cell is about to divide. So, only during cell division you see chromosomes and that is why I said you that chromosomes play a very important role in cell division. So, when do you talk about cell division? Two types of cell division which we normally talk about. One is mitosis, the other is meiosis. Now, meiosis is the one which takes place when gametes are formed because gametes are the haploid cells. So, there meiosis takes place. So, chromosomes play a very important role during the formation of gametes because that is when the genetic material is actually passed on to the next generation. Because how things happen, that's what I was discussing in the very first slide, right? Like uh, for a sexual reproduction, both the father and the mother, they are going to contribute uh, their genetic material. So, how do they do their contribution? They do it in the form of the chromosome, the haploid cells which contain one set of chromosomes. So, the chromosomes contain the genetic material. So, chromosomes play a very important role in the process of cell division and that is where we are trying to connect it to genetics. So, that is why I am giving you this recap just to tell you the role of chromosomes during meiosis. So, this is how a chromosome looks like and on this chromosome you can actually see these yellow colored structures which you see, they are nothing but the genes. So, thousands of genes are, may, might be present on a single chromosome. But the number of chromosomes inside a cell for a particular living organism is fixed. For example, in case of human beings, the number of chromosomes is 46. So, inside every cell, there will be 46 chromosomes. Similarly, if you talk about some other organism, for example, if you take the pea plant. So, for pea plant, they have a total of 7 chromosomes. Similar to uh, chromosomes. Similarly, if you talk about uh, uh, the fruit fly, 
the small fly which you normally see near your fruit. So they have four pairs of chromosomes, that is they have total eight chromosomes. So it varies from one organism to another, but for one organism the number of chromosomes inside a cell is fixed. So the chromosome is composed of DNA and nuclear proteins, that is quite obvious because chromosome is made up of the chromatin and chromatin contains DNA and proteins. So these chromosomes contain information for inheritance that, and they are present in the form of genes which are present on the chromosome. So these are the genes which are present on chromosomes. The next important part is chromatin. Now why am I discussing this is many a times people get confused with chromatin and chromatid. So that is why I just want to clear out those confusion. So when you say a chromatid, it is basically formed during the S subphase of interphase. So which phase am I talking about? Now, before the cell actually divides, now we discussed the cell cycle, right, where you have an interphase. So interphase is the time period when the cell actually undergoes a lot of changes and completely prepares itself for cell division. So in that interphase, you again have different phases like G1, that is gap 1 phase, then S phase, which is the synthesis phase, and then G2 phase, which is the gap 2 phase. Only after that, mitosis or meiosis, whatever has to take place, will take place. So the chromatids are formed in the S phase of the interphase. So how are the chromatids formed? Chromatids are nothing but one chromosome duplicates to form another copy. So the two copies are known as sister chromatids. So basically chromatin forms chromosomes. From chromosomes, chromatids are formed. So please do not get confused with chromatin and chromatid. They are two different things. So chromosome duplicates to form two copies. Now what is the need for duplication of chromosome? That's because when we talk about cell division, we are actually trying to make multiple cells from one cell. We want one cell to divide to form two cells, two cells to divide to form four cells, four cells to divide to form eight cells and so on. So we want to increase the number of cells being formed. So if you want to produce more and more cells, you need to provide the genetic material to each of those cells, right? So, and the genetic material is located in the chromosome. So, you need to duplicate the chromosome. So, you need to prepare multiple copies of the chromosome. It is something like this. Let us suppose that uh, you go to your school, your teacher teaches you something, okay? And she wants to give the notes to the class. Now, she just has one copy of the notes. But the, there are some 50 students in the class. So how will she distribute that one copy of notes to all the 60 students? If she wants that each of them should get a notes copy, what she'll have to do? She'll have to get the cop that notes copy Xeroxed and then she can distribute one Xeroxed copy to each of the 50 students. Correct? So that is the same case here. Now if we want that one cell should divide to form multiple cells, then we need to provide the genetic material to each of those multiple cells. And for that purpose, we need to duplicate the chromosome because chromosome is that part of the cell which actually contains the genetic material. So that is why chromosome duplicates and this happens during the synthesis phase of interface. So once it duplicates, so now instead of having just one strand of chromosome, you have two strands and these two strands are known as sister chromatids. Now how are the two strands connected together? They are connected at the centromere. So here if you see, I mean this is the point where it is like connected to each other. So it is the primary constriction of the chromosome it connects the sister chromatid. So if you can see that very obviously from the picture that the centromere is connecting the sister chromatids. Now during the course of the cell division what happens? The sister chromatid separate and one sister chromatid goes to each cell. And that is how the entire pro I mean I will not get into the detail of how mitosis take place or how meiosis take place. But this is the basic concept. That this is the purpose why the chromosome gets uh, duplicated and sister chromatids are so these are the basic terms as far as chromosome is concerned, chromatin, chromosome and chromatin. So now once you are... Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.